Season Pass, sponsored by City National Bank, starts now. Welcome to Season Pass. I'm your host, Sabrina Huber. Tonight we will look at week nine of the high school football season, plus Angelo State Athletics and postseason baseball. So let's get right into the next 30 minutes. Well, it's astonishing that we've reached week nine of the high school football season. And for the Central Bobcats, it was another tough loss last week in overtime, extending their losing streak. The Bobcats travel to face the Odessa Broncos in their second district game of the season, resulting in a heartbreaking 71 to 70 overtime loss. Nevertheless, head coach Kevin Crane turned this defeat into a valuable lesson that extended beyond the realm of football. Overall, you know, I thought our kids uh, fought hard. I thought they played hard, and which they have all year, you know. And, uh, you know, I just, I, I really and truly said this after the game, but I hurt for them. You know, that was a tough one. That was a tough one to swallow. And so uh, my heart hurts for them, but, uh, you know, that's kind of why football is such a great sport. It mirrors life, you know. And so uh, tough things are going to happen throughout the course of their lives, and, and they got to learn to bounce back. And Central hosting Midland Legacy over at San Angelo Stadium. First drive of the game for Central quarterback Christian English keeps it on the option play and scores the game's first touchdown, 7-0 Central on top. After three straight stops on the defensive side, Central Seth Morano comes up with a huge tackle for loss after the Midland Legacy muff snap. Bobcats take over with great field position. The Bobcats drive stalls and they have to settle for a field goal. Kicker Brian Parra lines up from 15 yards out and nails it to extend the Central lead to 10. Second quarter now Alex Lindsay wide open downfield Christian English launches it downfield and Lindsay strolls into the end zone to make this one 17 to 14 with five minutes remaining in the half Central will go on to fall 66 24 the final Central on the road next week when they face Mojo well, let's shift our focus to another team that confronted numerous challenges this season, that being the Lakeview Chiefs. Despite their 0-2 record in district play, the Lakeview Chiefs facing the Big Spring Steers had a chance to secure a playoff spot with one more victory. Thursday night marked their attempt to re revitalize an offense that had averaged just 13 points over the past three weeks of play. Ah, they do everything well. They got some good kids. They got a good running back and a quarterback. And he, he sees the field well, and he utilizes all his, his receivers. And uh, we just got, like I said earlier, we just got to be mentally ready and, and be where we need to be and, and do our job. Well, yeah, obviously, the, both of us is, uh, is a motivation to win on Thursday for us in Big Spring. Uh, they're well coached. They're going to be ready to play us. And like I said earlier, we just got to be mentally ready uh, and just go out there and do what we need to do. And, and hopefully we're in a position to win at the end of the game. Final home game for the Chiefs hosting Big Spring. First drive of the game, Sears QB Gavin Padron tosses it out to KV on Ford. He'll cut past defenders and sneak his way into the end zone for six. Sears get on the board first. After Big Spring recovers the fumble, here comes Ford capitalizing on the opportunity. He bulldozes it in the end zone, his second touchdown of the night. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ford cuts to the outside and extends their lead 21 0. This kid has been counting on his fingers all night. Big night for him. Chiefs in desperate need of a touchdown. Fourth down, Jalen Chavez keep, keeps it himself. He finds the end zone to give Lakeview their first score of the night. Chiefs fall in this one, and their hopes of a playoff spot all but gone now. 63-43, Big Spring wins it. The Chiefs back in action November 3rd when they travel to Lubbock as Staccato. And the Wallhawks defending district champs in District 2-3A Division 2 have had a smooth start to the season. And with their recent district victory against Ballinger last week, the Hawks look to continue the streak. First time in two weeks, Wall is home, welcoming TLCA San Angelo. First quarter, Wall strikes first. Design quarterback keeper Gunnar Diller takes it in himself for the five-yard score. Hawks up 7-0. Still in the first, more from the Hawks' ground game. Diller with the pitch out to Briggs-Jones. At first, you don't see him, then you do. Zoom in by the camera for the score it's now 14 nothing wall if one was good more is better Dillard yet another design QB run his second score of the night makes it 22 nothing following the two-point conversion the Hawks go to the air this time Dillard drops back finds a streaking Landon Beals down the sideline the long touchdown pitch and catch extends their lead all wall in this one setting up a district title game next week when they travel too early and the Brady Bulldogs faced one and one in in district play moved to two and up, two and one with the victory over Ballinger. They will look to continue the momentum when they face Grape Creek next. And ending with the Grape Creek Eagles, they have yet to find a win or coming off a 35 to 12 loss to TLCA San Angelo last week and not the outcome they wanted. They fall into early 54 nothing. 
up next on Season Pass, we look at our KLSD Game of the Week. That and much more coming your way next. There's nothing better than the delightful, dozing, dreamy drowsiness that comes with the perfect mattress. And at Denver Mattress, finding your perfect mattress has never been easier. And during the incredible value sale, the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend. Or take 10% off our entire Denver Mattress brand lineup. Plus four years no interest and free shipping. Score some sweet savings on some serious shut-eye. Only at Denver Mattress. The easiest way to get the right mattress. Your business is important. That's why we're proud to recognize KLST small business leaders. Gray's Transmissions, providing quality repairs and excellent customer service since 1974. Cross Texas Supply is where you can find all your welding supply and outdoor power equipment needs. With four of San Angelo's most beloved radio stations, Foster Communications is not only the signal of success, but the signal of San Angelo for more than 60 years. something even more urgent than his morning coffee. Hey Sam, did you know it's kitten season? Right now, thousands of kittens are in shelters across the nation and they're in need of love and care. If you foster a kitten, even for a week, you'll be giving them the chance to grow up and find families of their very own. What's in it for you? You'll get to start your day with a smile and your social posts will be way cuter too. Save some tiny lives today. Visit bestfriends.org slash kittens. Welcome back, everyone. Our KLSD Game of the Week featured District 14-2A Division I, the Junction Eagles and Mason Punchers. The Punchers, one of our few last unbeaten teams in the Concho Valley, facing the Red Hot Eagles. Here's a preview. I think you'll see a much different football team this Friday than you did last Friday out of the Punchers. In the approaching Friday night showdown with District 14-2A Division I, the Junction Eagles holding a 2-0 district record will face the unbeaten Mason Punchers, setting the stage for an exceptional encounter. This pivotal game represents a substantial test for both teams, prompting head coach Michael McLeod to pause and reflect on the success his team has had so far. We're, you know, working through adversity all the time. I mean, everybody thinks, well, because you're winning, there are no problems, and that's definitely not the case uh, but nonetheless uh, you know in, in district play a lot of competition this year um, and so you know we can't coast through district or nothing I mean we got to every week in a week out you know we got to be consistent in our preparation and as for head coach Scott Freeman his Eagles kicked off the district season with a thrilling overtime win against Stockdale followed by a victorious performance against Harper last week while Friday night's challenge looms large his primary message remains the same you know the biggest thing for us is come come be us don't worry about who we're facing on Friday if it was any other team I bet you know we wouldn't be so nervous and all that but just because of what their name is uh, you know I get it so uh, just for us right now though we just need to show up and play junction football after securing a one-point victory against Johnson City the punchers are now 1-0 in district play and Mason is fully prepared for their upcoming challenge they're playing great uh, they have talent to go along with it um, and uh, they're more confident than they've ever been you know in the recent past and uh, rightfully so uh, I expect them to come in swinging both teams are aware of what it will require to secure win they're fast overall and they're hard up the middle but if we shut that down I think we'll have the game I think just playing how we know how to play and coming out strong and not flat like we did against John City over at the Puncher Dome, Mason playing host to Junction. In the first quarter, Frankie Boley hands off to Sutton Solario and watch him do the rest. Gets through a few defenders, and then he's untouched the rest of the way. Mason gets on the board first, 7-0. Still in the first, looks like Chasen Doyle trips, tries to get something out of nothing, but ball is balled out of Aiden Cardwell's hands. And who will come up with it? There goes Matthew King. He's in for six to continue their lead. Junction on the next play, looking to erase the fumble. Mason has other plans. Doyle throws right into the hands of Carlton Schmidt. A pick 
six for him. All momentum for the punchers. In the second quarter now, look who it is. Solario cuts to the outside and leaves defenders behind him. He makes this a 33-0 game. Mason with a big-time win. They stay undefeated in district play. And in District 3-2A Division 1, the Sonora Broncos, who like the Mason Punchers, remained undefeated with their victory against Anthony 60-26, the final. The Broncos have two more games left in the regular season. Next week, they face Cristobal, while the following, they, fo they face Forsan. And speaking of those two teams, the Cristobal Cougars began district play 0-2 and, and would look to turn the page. Well, not the outcome they wanted, but they would fall to four sand to now drop to 0-3 in district. They are now still looking for their first district victory and will face the Broncos next. And the Ozona Lions, who are coming off a victory against Cristobal, took on the Reagan County Owls earlier this week. They now move to 2-1 and in district play with the victory and will face four sand next. Turning on our attention to District 5, 2A Division 2. Well, for these teams, it's week four of district play. And for Sterling City and El Dorado, this game was a big one. We start over in Sterling City. The Eagles hosting El Dorado. El Dorado making some moves first. QB Omar Barajas with a QB sneak and tush push in for the touchdown. 7 0 El Dorado. The Sterling City Eagles looking to respond back. QB Ty Turner looking downfield connects with Kenya McCabe to move the sticks down the field for the Eagles. First down and 10 to go. El Dorado close to the end zone and scoring distance maybe a QB sneak nope a quick pitch out to Marcos Moran he takes a hit and follows it into the end zone El Dorado 14 nothing before the half Stolen City pressing downfield Turner finds his man McCabe again he puts on the footwork to move the Eagles down the field El Dorado comes away with the win here 24 nothing over Sterling City and continue with District 5, 2A Division 2. Water Valley coming off a shutout loss against Wink in Week 2 of District Play would have a bounce back victory against Ira Ann. They close out their district season against McCammy next week. And after securing their first district victory last week by defeating Hamlin, the Miles Bulldogs aim to move closer to a playoff spot as they returned home Friday night. Miles playing host at TLCA Abilene looking to move to 2-1 and one in district play. Doesn't take long for the Bulldogs to get going in this one. Quarterback Haven Book in the pocket scrambles and decides to take it himself, lowers his shoulder and in for 6-7-0 Miles. Just a couple minutes later, Book goes to the air on this one. One pump fake then lets it fly, connecting with Cooper Ellison for the touchdown. Touchdown, extending the Bulldogs lead to 14. Miles goes back to the ground. Book gives the ball off to Tevin Mead, gets to the outside and goes in untouched for yet another Bulldog score. Miles rolls in this one, 56 to 6, setting up a showdown on, on the road next week against Roscoe. Coming up next on season pass, we turn to six man highlights. That and more coming your way next. Easy money. Hi, I'm Mike. Come to MGB for quick, easy money. It's the way Texans have cashed in on their gold, silver, and diamonds for over a decade. Come to MGB, Mike's Gold Buyers, and you'll say, I sold gold and I like Mike. Lone Star Market in Ballinger, Texas is gearing up for the big event, October 27th and 28th. You don't want to miss out on over 100 vendors from boutique, meddling woodworkers, to antiques and Christmas gift items. Come and see us for a true shopping experience. The reason I got into sports actually starts when I was a young kid. Every weekend I would call my grandfather, break out the sports newspaper, go through all the stats, all the games that happened the night previously. Then it continued on till when I was older. Every time something big would happen, I'd call him, he'd call me, kind of continued. Unfortunately, he passed a few years back. Still wear one of his ties that he gave me before he passed to kind of keep him with me as I continue on my journey. baby in the hospital NICU. If we come together, we can help every mom and baby be healthy and strong. Joy March for Babies, a mother of a movement. Play is very important. Studies show that play is one of the best ways to stimulate brain development. And learn how to solve problems. In fact, play is critical to our physical and emotional well-being. At any age. And this. This is the worldwide headquarters of play. You won't find it on any map. It's wherever your imagination takes you. And that. And that. And that is the genius of play. 
Learn more about play at thegeniusofplay.org. Welcome back to Season Pass. Well, let's turn our eyes to six-man football. District 13, 1A Division 1. The final two teams undefeated met Friday night and in an important one at that. We head out to Mertzen, USA. The Hornets hosting the steers of Robert Lee. Early first, the Hornets strike first. The pitch back to Wyatt Morris. Gets to the outside, sheds off a tackle, tiptoeing his way down the sidelines and in for the score, 8-0 Erin County. Robert Lee answers. Braden Sherwood gets the pitch back, goes right up the middle, reaches out over the goal line, and the refs rule it a touch. Touchdown 8 8 now. The Steers would take their first lead in this one with some trickery. Brenner Sherwood with a great ball right, then right to someone he's very familiar with. Braden Sherwood, the pitch and catch makes it 16 8. Robert Lee. Erin County down 20 8 until it's Wyatt Morris once again right up the seam. Gets some great blocking ahead of him and he is gone. The Hornets remain undefeated with the score over Robert Lee. The back to back title hopes alive and well for IC. Also in District 13 1A, crucial game for both Menard and Very Best. First possession for the Falcons here in this one. It's Clyde Hallmark with the misdirection, turns on the burners, makes one man miss, makes another man miss, and as his eyes set on the end zone, he would stroll in for the touchdown, putting Very Best on the board first. After the extra point is good, the Falcons line up for the onside kick. The ball bounces off the Menard player, and the Very Best Falcons, Clyde Hallmark, recovers to get his team the ball back in the first. The Yellow Jacket Stevens steps up here on this play, both John Michael Egg Eggleston and Brandon Spinks comes up with a huge tackle for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. Hallmark, can you do something for me? Rolls out left and puts it on the money to Peyton Larson for the touchdown. All very best in this one as they win 58 to 8. And in District 13, 1A Division 2 action, the Brought Longhorns began district play facing the Trent Gorillas, where they would come out on top 54 to 6. A big win for them, and they will look to continue the streak when they face the Blackwell Hornets next Friday. And speaking of Blackwell, they began district play with a loss against Lorraine, 71 to 52. And like I mentioned earlier, they will look to bounce back when they face the Longhorns next. And lastly, after a four and three finish to non-district play, the Paint Rock Indians began their district season Friday night with a loss to Rising Star, 54 to six. They look towards Moran next. Some season pass. Let's check in on Angelo State Athletics. We have highlights and more coming up next. I own Fat Cats Gaming and Richter Real Estate Holdings. I would just like to express how much of an honor it is to be recognized as one of St. Angelo's 20 under 40 this year. My team and I are excited to help you and your family have fun, play games, and make new friends. Presenting Veterans Voices, honoring those who serve. Robert Andry is one of the last surviving members of the 761st Battalion, the first black tank unit to serve in combat during World War II. After decades of racism and oppression back at home, in 2022, he finally received a Purple Heart for his valor. Sharing veteran stories all month long, sponsored by Trans-Texas Southwest Credit Union. It's time again for the Teacher of the Week, sponsored by Concho Educators Federal Credit Union. Go to ConchoValleyHomepage.com and tell us how your teacher goes above and beyond. They could win great prizes like a gift card to Pax Saddle Barbecue, a plaque from Angelo Awards, teacher appreciation bag from Concho Educators, a gift card from Holiday Cleaners, a flower bouquet from Southwest Floors, a delicious cake from City Cafe and Bakery, and a gift certificate from Old Central Firehouse. Teacher of the Week is sponsored by Concho Educators Federal Credit Union. Go to ConchoValleyHomepage.com for more info. Sometimes people with disabilities feel invisible. Would she like some coffee or tea? Hi, I'll have tea, please. Thank you. I think this is yours, but everyone should receive the same respect and consideration. Can I get the door for you? Oh my, yes, thank you. Happy to help. Brought to you by the United Spinal Association. To learn more, download our disability etiquette booklet at unitedspinal.org. Here we go. Another teen, another selfie. Wait, wait. She recycled. Well, that's not a selfie. 
That's a selflessy. Oh, that's terrible, Stacy. Well, the 19th ranked Angela State Rams football team came off a 38 to 16 victory against Texas A&M Kingsville on October 14th and turned their eyes to UTPB on their homecoming. This football game was pivotal for the Rams as they aimed to sustain their playoff aspirations. Saturday night posed a significant challenge as they faced the Falcons who were experiencing their best season in program history. ASU had dominated the first six meetings since the 2016 season and head coach Jeff Gersh emphasized the significance of this upcoming matchup. That urgency is, has increased, I think, the awareness of, uh, of uh, the situation where, you, where you, you, know, you lose another game, it's gonna be hard you know, to, to do what you wanna do and reach the goals you wanna reach. So you know, I think that part of it plays into it a little bit, but you know, our guys are playing with great confidence and they're loose, you know, they're, uh, you know, they practice well, you know, we're getting prepared well. So I think that's the biggest thing uh, you see to it. There's not a panic button, but there's an understanding of the urgency that uh, needs to go into it to uh, reach the goals we want to reach. Rams looking to keep their momentum going, hosting the Falcons at LeGrand Stadium. ASU up by three. UTB PB selling for a field goal. Nope, it's blocked. And here comes Andrew Pitts. He'll be off to the race. It's a 59-yard return, a scoop and score for him to make it 10-0 Angelo State. Right before halftime, Rams looking to extend the lead. Gerald Gardner looking for a man, and there he goes using his legs. He's in for six to extend the lead, 17-7 at half. Coming back after half, Rams have to settle for a field goal to make it now 20-14 with a lot of football left to be played. And the game came down to this play. Gardner scrambles. He's this one up a Hail Mary in the end zone, but it will fall into the hands of Jeremiah Cooley. UTPB seals this game. The Falcons beat Angelo State for the first time in program history. Rams fall at home 28-23 the final. And following a draw against 13th ranked DBU, the Angelo State women's soccer team returned to their home field on Wednesday to face West Texas A&M. The Bells back home squaring off against the Lady Buffs of West Texas A&M. First half, little give and go action. Mia Zarnecki over to Kaylin Heisey. Back to Zarnecki. She's got one thing on her mind. I'm shooting and that shot finds the back of the net from way out. ASU up 1-0. The Bells are just getting started. Abigail Gutierrez with a beautiful ball to in, the, in the box off the head of Heisey and right to Mariah Griffin. She goes short side to give the Bells a 2-0 lead just 20 minutes into this one. Still in the first half, Lady Buffs with the free kick played into the box off the head of a WT player, but Amber Lockwood there for the save. Still 2-0 Bells. More from the Bells, Grace Jordan able to slip the ball past her defender right over to Madison Maxey. A hard challenge by the Lady Buff, but Maxey stays with it. The shot off the post, the keeper, and goes in. Domination for the Bells, and they remain unbeaten at home with a 4-0 victory over West Texas A&M. And during the Rambo's volleyball team, they face St. Edwards Friday night, making it the first win on Dig Pink Night since 2019. Laney Dale out assisted the entire Hilltopper squad and led all players with 13 digs for her 15th career double double and ninth double double of the season. And continuing with the Rambells, they were on a four-game winning streak and geared up for their home matchup against St. Mary's Saturday with hopes of extending their momentum. Rambells looking for their fifth straight win here. St. Mary's trying for some points down low, all the way down. Laney Dale pops it back up. Kaylee Enex outside to set it up. Evelyn Torres, there she goes, slamming it down for the Bells. Rattlers looking to send it down, stuffed by the Bells back over the net. But here comes Torres and Kate Boldrick for block number two, Bells point. Off the Rattlers save Torres with a bump over to Dale with the jumping back set. Hannah Kennison slammed down with some style. ASU point. Set point for the Bells. Island Ferguson keeps it alive. Tiny set from Reina Sanchez slamming it down. Bells point off the Rattlers fingertips. Bells take this one in straight sets. Coming up next on Season Pass, we turn to postseason baseball and a cornhole championship. Stick around. Easy money. Hi, I'm Mike. Come to MGB for quick, easy money. It's the way Texans have cashed in on their gold, silver, and diamonds for over a decade. Come to MGB, Mike's Gold Buyers, and you'll say, I sold gold and I like Mike. Presenting veterans' voices, honoring those who serve. Since 2001, 125,000 veterans have committed suicide. 
That's why Ellen Bravo, a veteran herself, now works with Stop Soldier Suicide. She captured these photos now on display to help others survive the transition to civilian life. Sharing veteran stories all month long. Sponsored by Concho Valley Door. Never miss a thing with ConchoValleyHomePage.com. Live local radar, instant breaking news alerts, all in one spot. ConchoValleyHomePage.com and the Concho Valley Homepage app. Welcome back, everyone. And the game everybody was waiting for, the Texas Rangers and Houston Astros were back tonight in game six. Astros are one game away from advancing to the World Series for the third straight year, and the Rangers hope to keep their season alive. Astros are one game away from advancing, and the Rangers hope to keep their season alive. Adalis Garcia broke the game open with a ninth inning grand slam that erased the Astros' hopes of a rally. We now head on to game seven on Monday. And it's a Minnesota backyard staple played at a level you've maybe never seen before. Whether you call it cornhole or bags, there's no debating the competition. And Ramsey is off the charts this weekend. Adam Duxter takes us inside the Minnesota State Cornhole Championships. With every shot and swish, it seems the popularity of this sport surges. This weekend is it's it's chaotic. It's it's fun. Uh, the whole state of Minnesota comes together. A lot of people. You know, today we have almost 200 doubles teams registered. That's 400 people. At Ramsey's Adrenaline Sports Center, Steve Lamser is one of those cornhole fanatics, driving in for this weekend's state championship all the way from St. Cloud. In his trek, shorter than some. Yeah, hours. A lot of people will drive, um, and that's how serious people take it. They'll they'll drive four, five, six hours. I've talked to a few people that drove, you know, over five hours to get here. Saturday's competition put teams of doubles into multiple brackets. The eventual winners taking home a cash prize. And the competition is serious because the prize money is serious. You're looking at an ACL Pro, the American Cornhole League, finishing up an event from last night. The money he can earn is close to $3,000 just from this one game. In its third year in Rims, the event's host says there's one big difference between this and the other sports they play host to. So it's a unique sport in that that athletic piece isn't necessarily as crucial. You still have to be good at what you're doing. Uh, but whether, again, you're 17, 18 years old or in your 50s and 60s, uh, they can compete and play against each other and do just fine. Compete, the operative word. But also a sense that when the match is over, it's still a celebration of sharing in the sport you love. Well, that will wrap up this episode of Season Pass. You can check out all of our content on ConchaValleyHomepage.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at KLSG Sports. Make sure to use the hashtag Season Pass to stay in the conversation. Well, we'll see everyone next week. Good night, Concha Valley. Thank you for watching Season Pass, sponsored by City National Bank. For more in-depth stories, scores, and highlights, head to ConchoValleyHomePage.com. For more on today's stories, visit ConchoValleyHomePage.com.